It is the it is the morning before the first evening of Bible school. Tonight, Bible school starts. So, I think uh, Amy, who is a little hyper right now, would like to make an announcement with the help of Donna. So, Amy and Donna, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Today is the day. You can play that song so we get a taste of what it's like. He gives us hope for each new day. So I hope you join us for VBS this week. I hope you come sing and dance with us each night. And also come join us for dinner. Donna's going to... Yes. So if you turn into your um, cover, there is a little list of um, what they'll be serving every night. Of course, that's just like the main, uh, the main dish, the main part of the meal. And obviously, there's always lots of goodies to go along with that, as well as always some yummy desserts and things. So even if you cannot be here all night, every night, we really invite you to come and be a part of the, the meal time and have some fellowship and just see the excitement that is happening every night here. So we invite you to come and join us for the meals. Because this place flies with yeah. the Holy Spirit all week long. So we hope you have time to come in and feel that excitement. Also, um, our missions this year, a couple weeks ago I introduced you to Operacion Hogar, which is Operation Homes, and our hopes to build at least one home in Juarez, Mexico for a family. You know, it's only like a 12 by 20 cinder block building, but it's home. To them, it gets them out of cardboard coverings and doghouse looking items that they're living in that they've dug out of a landfill. So we've already had a wonderful amount of money come in so far so we are on our way to our first home so get your change ready this week we're having pennies tonight dime and nickels tomorrow then dimes quarters and then green stuff and checks are always welcome as well <laughs> so bring those by the bank which will be in the gym and drop it off to our lovely counters and they'll be happy to take that off your hands for you so let's help build at least one house this year in Juarez hopefully two all right and we have just a tremendous amount of amazing volunteers, both uh, youth and adults mm -hmm. that come every night, commit themselves to this week. And so something special that we like to do for them is we provide um, what we call our break area that we encourage all of them every night to just take a little time, maybe at least five or 10 minutes, 15 or 20, um, to just go there and just relax, refresh yourself. And we always like to have some very wonderful things to eat, some great treats, some <coughs> chocolate, chocolate and, some, coffee. and some chocolate, chocolate. coffee. And, and vegetables with but, chocolate. Right. Any yep, fruit whatever. and chocolate. Mm -hmm. Desserts. Chocolate. Right. So uh, normally Tammy Greeter is the one who kind of uh, pulls that all together and, and uh, gets it all organized. And she needed to take a little break this year. So we do need a little uh, extra help in there. So if any of you are willing to bake something, make Chocolate. something, Chocolate. pick up something. Chocolate. Um, just feel free to do that anytime throughout the week and just drop it off anytime and we do have some people that are going to get that organized and ready to go but um, we don't want it all to land on them that they have to do all of it so we'd love to have some of your goodies. So we hope that you'll join us this week. Please don't be shy. Come on in on Thursday night at 8 o'clock. We will have a little program for the kids to sing and dance for you and to show what they've learned this week, what their scriptures are. Because this week our focus is Jesus is the light of the world. That's why we're in a cave, a darkened time in our lives. We face things every day that darken our lives, but Jesus lights the way. And that's what we're going to give to our kids this week. That honest truth that no matter what happens in our lives, we can seek Jesus out in everything and he will light the way for us. So, hope to see you Thursday night at 8, but come every night for dinner and bring your pennies tonight.
I think it's great to get an applause for an announcement, isn't it? It's awesome. Praise God for all the Bible school leaders and teachers and youth leaders and especially for the children. And praise God for promising to send us His Holy Spirit this week. If you look at the announcements, they're all there. Stuff coming up. Opportunities uh, galore. In August, we're going to be having baptisms by immersion. If you have never been baptized and would like to be baptized by immersion, talk to one of us, Pastor Lori or me. Uh, if you have been baptized and have never experienced immersion, you can remember your baptism through immersion. And we're going to be doing that during the worship services, uh, 8, 9.30, and 10.45. Can you just imagine how we're going to manage that? <laughs> so... We have some work to do to get ready for worship, and it is to sing the last song of the service, which is one we don't know yet. It's called Weave. So I'll sing it through once, then you sing it through. It's easy, and then we'll be all ready to sing it at the end. Are you ready? Weave, weave, weave us together. Weave us together in unity and love. Weave, weave, weave us together. Weave us together, together in love. Try it. Here we go. Weave, weave, weave us together. Weave us together in unity and love. Weave, weave, weave us together. Weave us together, together in love. Now quiet your hearts and let's prepare for worship while Jane plays. Let's stand and sing our first hymn, Christ for the World We Sing.
Let's read responsibly. Clap your hands, all people. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. God is ru ruler over all the earth and reigns over all nations. Gather to know the immeasurable greatness of God to exalt in the one who grants revelation. We come together blessing God for all we have seen and heard. Let's sing. Have a seat. Let's pray together before we receive our offering. May our gifts be as generous as your provision for us, O God. Use them to bear witness to the light you sent in Christ Jesus. Move us and all people to prayer, rejoicing, and thanksgiving as we administer these offerings for their best possible return Keep us faithful to your purposes. Amen. Uh, Diane Kovach is uh, new to our church, her and her husband Mike, and uh, she is going to share the special music this morning while we receive our offering. Bless you. <clears throat> See? 
it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. Lord, the offering we've received this morning is just a, a small portion of the offering we offer to you this week. We offer Vacation Bible School to you. We offer each child to you. We offer the entire experience to you that your good work might be accomplished in us and through us and that you might raise up a new generation passionate for the good news about you. Use this money to that end. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Have a seat. Oh, no! <laughs> Greet each other in the name of the Lord. I'm sorry if I scared anybody. Come, come. Kids, come on up if you're, if you're able and willing. Come to Miss Amy. Come to me. You sporting some tattoos there? Cool. Here they come. Well, hello, dear friends. How are we today? Good. Today I want to talk about a word called worry. Who knows what that word means? Lady, how, what does it mean? Okay, fear. Fear about doing something. Very good. He says we worry about a giant monster jumping out of a cave. Oh no, fear. What else? What else can you say about worry? Yeah, what else? If you're worried to do something, like you're afraid, or you, something you think and 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 think about so much that kind of eats at you and sometimes you get sick to your stomach. Does anybody have any worries? 
Everybody has a worry, I think. But we all worry about different things. So what do, what do kids worry about? What do you guys worry about? Anything? Layton, what do you worry about? Okay. He's read too many Harry Potter books. You did see Harry Potter last night? The good thing is it's fiction, so it won't happen. What else? Do you, what do kids worry about? What do you worry about, Elliot? Kind of thunderstorms. thunderstorms. Like Someone in the last service said tornadoes. Worried about tornadoes and thunderstorms coming to get you? What else do you worry about? I'm kind of worried because I, re I rented a video game in and I'll have to return it on Tuesday and I don't know if it's Oh, so you're worried you have to return it before you win? That's a bust. See, kids have legitimate worries, people. What else do we worry about? What do you worry about? Anything? Dying? You worry about dying? Sometimes we do. What do you What do you worry about? She's worried about being out in the rain because it might turn stormy. That's a good worry, a legitimate worry. One more worry. Someone I haven't called on yet. Cameron, you're older. What do you worry about as an older dude? Not getting your homework done because you have so much. Oh, that is a worry. Do you guys worry? Anybody worry about tests yet? Some of you worry about tests. Hey. You over there, what do you worry about? You're older. Yeah. <laughs> Not Tess. He doesn't worry about Tess. No, he doesn't study. Well, we'll have to pray for him tonight. What, what do you worry about, grown-ups? Kids. We worry about our kids. Oh, yeah, we do. What else do we worry about? Money. Sometimes we worry about money and having enough to pay our bills. What else do we worry about? Rex, what do you worry about? About what? You worry about mommy? Oh, yeah, because you love your mommy. Good answer. He gets an extra treat today, Mom. <laughs> what do you worry about? Nothing? Good for you. Of tornadoes. Well, you know, and thunderstorms kind of worries us. And we're going to talk about worry VBS this week, but you don't want to know what I worry about. You would think VBS, right? But, like, I didn't worry about, like, the decorations because I know Miss Lisa can take two crayons and a piece of paper and make a cruise ship. I mean, she's that good. She's that good. And I didn't worry about, like, volunteers because people always want to volunteer because they like you here. Isn't that great that they like you? Isn't it nice to know that people like you? They, a lot of people like you. They love you, and they want to come teach you and be with you all week, and that's a great thing. You know what I worry about the most is making everyone happy. I'm a people pleaser. I want everyone to be happy all the time. And it's really hard. Because you know why? We can't make everybody happy because we're all different. Let's, let's, here's an example. Let's say you and I, we're going to spend uh, like a week together. And all I have to feed you are peaches. Okay? And all of you like peaches except for Cameron. So Cameron, in our, in our story... Cameron hates peaches. And see, I'm going to do whatever I can to make peaches different for each day because we don't want to just eat a peach every day. I'm going to broil them and boil them and fricassee them and whatever, make fancy things out of these peaches. But no matter what I do with these peaches, Cameron is never going to like them because he doesn't like peaches. And no matter what I do to the peaches, 
however I twist them and churn them and cook them and make them, he's never going to like them. And that's kind of like in our lives. We can't make everybody happy because we're all different. And no matter what we do to make these people happy, it may not happen because we're different. So when I worry, that's silly. I, you know who I need to make happy? In the midst of all of this, who should I be working to make happy? Who? Jesus and God and me. I think I get happy when I make God happy. So that's what I got to focus on. I got to forget about trying to make everybody happy, and I got to focus on making my God happy. Is that a good thing to do? So when we worry, no matter what you worry about, whether it's thunderstorms or tornadoes or having to return your video game early or a test or getting your homework done or trying to please people, we just need to give all that worry to God because he can take care of it. Yes? We don't want the house to fall over. Good plan. Well, let's pray about worry. Will you pray with me? Oh, my goodness. Here we go. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for loving us, for guiding us, for being with us every time we are worried. We give our worries to you. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I will see you tonight at VBS. So at the beginning of our prayer time, there'll be silent prayer time. Why don't we take everything that we worry about and lay it before Jesus. For the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And the peace of God that transcends all human understanding will keep guard over our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Lord God, like Amy and the kids did, we want to give all our worries to you. Our worries about the world, about its unrest, its instability. Our worries about hatred in this world. We want to give all our worries to you so that we can be useful in meeting the needs of this world for your good and glory. Take our worries, but take our hands and feet and lives as well. Take us, Lord, and use us. Use us for making a difference in this world. Lord, we thank you that you are our our friend, our comforter, our helper. And so, Lord, we entrust to you those that have been through these serious surgeries and those who are in recovery right now. Lord, we pray for Tia Bill and for the whole family. We pray for Grant Barton. And we thank you, God, for bringing them through and now enabling them to recover. We pray for your comfort, Lord, for those that mourn, for Greg Alster and the loss of his mom, for Mary Brown and the loss of her sister. Lord, be present for them in comfort. 
We cry out for each other, Lord, but we also cry out for the needs of the world. There are so many that it makes our heads spin. But Lord, you can point us to just one need and enable us through your spirit, through your wisdom, through the through what you have provided to us to be instruments of your peace in this world. So guide us and speak to us and challenge us through Pastor Lori and through the message today and we'll give you the praise and the glory. Prepare us to hear your word as we pray the prayer you taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite us to um, consider two scriptures this morning. First is the Psalm 67, and the second one is from Matthew. So Psalm 67, hear these words. Let God grant us grace and bless us. Let God make his face shine on us. So that your way became known on earth, so that your salvation becomes known among the nations. Let the people thank you, God. Let all the people thank you. Let the people celebrate and shout with joy because you judge the nations fairly and guide all nations on the earth. Let the people thank you, God. Let all the people thank you. The earth has yielded its harvest. God blesses us. Our God blesses us. Let God continue to bless us that the far ends of the earth honor him. And the second is from Matthew 22, verses 1 to 14. <clears throat> Jesus responded by speaking again in parables. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding party for his son. He sent his servants to call those invited to the wedding party, but they didn't want to come. Again, he sent other servants and said to them, Tell those who have been invited, Look, the meal is prepared. I've butchered the oxen and the fatted cattle. Now everything's ready. Come to the wedding party. But they paid no attention and went away, some to their fields, others to their businesses. The rest of them grabbed his servants, abused them, and killed them. And the king was angry, and he sent his soldiers to destroy those murderers and set the city on fire. And then he said to his servants, The wedding party is prepared, but those who were invited weren't worthy. Therefore go to the roads on the edge of town and invite everyone you find to the wedding party. And then those servants went to the roads and gathered everyone they found, both evil and good. And the wedding party was full of guests. And now, when the king came in and saw the guests, he spotted a man who wasn't wearing a wedding, wedding clothes. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? But he was speechless. And then the king said to his servants, Tie his hands and feet and throw him out into the farthest darkness. People there will be weeping and grinding their teeth. Many people are invited, but few people are chosen. This is the word of the Lord. So I thought it would be kind of fun um, this morning to not just tell you about missions, but to uh, invite a couple of people to come up and talk about mission experiences also. And so I have invited... Um, my husband David Johnston to come up. Um, he's gone to um, uh, Panama and Brazil and Honduras on mission teams. And my daughter, our daughter Clarissa Johnston, uh, she's going to come up too. She has gone to Panama when she was five years old, and she taught English as a second language while she was there. And uh, she's also been on a mission trip to Washington D.C. that she'll probably reflect upon too. So um, I invite them to come up this morning. So if you could talk about how did you experience God uh, working through you and through your mission team on your experiences that you've been in. 
On my mission trip to Washington, D.C., we um, experienced God by helping people um, get the things that they needed. So we gave people um, food who were hungry and people showers who needed showers. So in the morning, um, we got up early and gave people washcloths and shampoo and allowed them into the church to take showers there. Uh, we also brought them extra sandwiches that we had from lunch and we um, bagged food to send to Africa with the church. They, one of their Sundays, they decided instead of having regular worship service, they just bagged rice and sent it to Africa. So people came to church that Sunday, and instead of sitting in their pews, in their chairs, they went into the gym and they bagged rice mm -hmm. that was being sent, uh, sent to Africa. Yeah. Okay. We also sorted through furniture and um, gleaned fields uh, to give to a kitchen who trained um, people who needed a job how to make food so that they could um, get a job someday. Yeah, that was really interesting. When they went out and gleaned fields, I didn't know they still did that. So after the farmers had harvested, they went out and they picked up whatever was left over in the field. So, and, and David, you want to talk about your... Yes, uh, the projects I worked, uh, you see, my main thinking is we're serving others in need. And uh, the projects were ongoing projects in other countries. The church has already sent money to those uh, projects. There's uh, materials bought, there's people working, locals, uh, uh, craftsmen working on the buildings. It, it's already a, 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 th a thing in progress. And our group shows up uh, to help, to be part of the work process. We're not there to show them how to do it. We're not there to direct it in some way. We're there to just show up and say, tell us what you need. What do you want us to do? And they, it's typically it's a building project. It might be uh, the pastor's house uh, in Panama. It was. Uh, um, a, a home for single women with children in Brazil or uh, Honduras was a, a Methodist building there in the, in the capital, in Tegucigalpa. And um, let's see, we would uh, do that. We had Bible school cl uh, classes, the English like, second language classes. We had, uh, we'll talk about gardening in, in Panama. And um, it, it's just a, a week of, of just pouring ourselves out there knowing we're doing the right thing. So how do you how do you experience God in that? Just by working alongside other people? Yep, the communication with the people is very important. Yep, that was a, that was kind of a tough one in Brazil. Uh, they, uh, you know, uh, uh, the slave trade was still active. It was legal in eight, eight, up to about 1890 in in the area that we were in in Brazil. And actually, they had illegal trade up until 1910 around there. And so there's this burden of as we were, workers there were, were uh, lighter skinned and economically we were, were upper class. And so when we would sit down at lunchtime with the workers, the very people we've been working with all day long, we were to sit and eat lunch with them, we would sit down at the table and they would get up and leave because that's what they're supposed to do. You know? mm -hmm. yeah, and so we had to have a, a sit down <laughs> meeting to explain we're there to serve and we're equal. That had to be explained to them because it's automatic. I remember that when I was, uh, went on the mission trip to, to Zimbabwe, um, we, would, we would all sit down for lunch and um, there would, we would sit down with the workers, but it often happened that there were more workers at lunchtime than there were workers during the, the oh, time yeah. before or after. Yeah. They, all of a sudden there was this extra group of workers that happened to come and eat lunch with yeah. us and that was, that was expected. We, we, ex you know, we made sure that there was enough Everyone. That was a change. Actually, so we did see after it was explained the structure of this. There, there were more. Pe yeah, I know she mentioned there, there were a few more people there, and they actually opened up and they would show us things uh, out in the sugarcane fields. They would find these really big grasshoppers, and they would put them in a little cage, and they would bring them and show us. You know, just to kind of exciting uh, things. Yeah. Well, what difference does it make uh, when you go on a mission team? What difference does it make to the to the people that you're with, um, to to the people that you work beside? What difference does it make? It provides them with things that they need and um, the skills that they need to be successful. It gives them hope for the future to be able to make things better in the area. So definitely a sense of hope when you're working along beside them. Obviously there's the structure that's being built that's going to be useful later on, but I think also putting a face to the money that's flowing to them for these projects to say that there's people in the United States that care enough. So you, you, care, you care by sending money, but you also care by actually yeah, going and, and being there. 
Yeah. So, did, okay. yeah. Why why should someone go on a mission team? You should go on a mission team because it's it brings people hope and it brings them um, happiness and joy. It can sh really show God's love to people who might not normally see that in the people around them. Yeah, and it's, it's just uh, the uh, so this gratification of doing those things to, to bring that kind of hope just to, in the working side by side is very gratifying. And well, to give the total pitch here, there there is a day of tour playing tourist. You know, and so you get to see another country um, and all the culture. But I think the important thing about it is the, the, the playing tourist for a day is that you do it within the culture that you've just witnessed. You understand the hardships. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for, for sharing. So we stand at a door of opportunity. We're standing at a door of opportunity right this very moment. Maybe you've seen something like this in the, news, in the newspaper. You know, um, there was a man, Charles, he was at this, on the side of the road and the policeman came by to check on him because it was kind of strange that he was just uh, there by the side of the road and he asked him, and this is, you know, are you okay? Thing, are you doing okay? And in the, in the newspaper, the man replied, Charles said, I couldn't remember where I was going thought I ought to sit here until it came to me. Sometimes the church is like that too. That we're sitting on the sideline because we can't remember where we're going. We can't remember what our real purpose is. And so we're just kind of sitting thinking, now, now where is it that we're supposed to be going? And we're standing there at the very door of opportunity. We've forgotten that Jesus came for all people. That the gospel message is to go out into the whole world to all people and all nations. And we need to find ourselves at that door of opportunity. I need to find myself at that door of opportunity. You need to find, we need to be ready to go through that door when it's there. Now I would say that we're a, we are a nice church. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, we're a pretty nice church. We have, it's good that we're a nice church, right? But I think about that early church, that church in Jerusalem. I think about Peter and, and gathering people and telling them the story about the gospel of Jesus Christ, thinking, well, let's just gather nice people together. Let's just gather, you know, that Jerusalem nice people. And we'll put them together and we'll just have a nice church. I don't think that's probably what he thought about. I think about those early disciples and they're, and they're gathering people to tell them about the message of Jesus Christ and they're trying to make a difference in the world that they were living in. That's what the message was about. Helping them to see that the message of Jesus Christ is making a difference in the world by inviting them to come to faith. To come to faith, to see what the, the real purpose is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. It's not to be a nice church. It's to be a church that makes a difference. Many times we make we make plans, you know, we, we, we decide, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do such and and then we ask God to bless it. When actually our, we should be doing almost the opposite or, or, or thinking in a different way. Saying, what is it, God, that you want us to do? I think our building committee is really approaching it that way. What is it, God, that you want us to do? And how can we um, be on board with it? What is it, God, that you want us to do? What is the door you want us to open? We're ready to go through it. It's better if we think about it that way rather than telling God, this is what we're going to do, you need to bless it. How can we make it happen? God, what is it you want us to do? How can we make it happen? I, I think Amy has, has approached Vacation Bible School, her mission project, in that same manner, that God, he, seeking, he, she sought out God's will. What is it, God, you want us to do? Through Vacation Bible School. We're going to build houses for people in, in Mexico and war is Mexico 
two thousand can you imagine building a house for two thousand dollars and living in a house like that and yet those are houses that are going to provide safe places for people that wouldn't have a place to live and you know how we're going to do it by collecting pennies tonight coins every night we're bringing children are bringing their coins so that people can have a house to live in. That's a door of opportunity. A way for them to see how God works in a miraculous way. Don't you want to be a part of that? There are doors of opportunity all around us. Find one. Find one of those doors and walk through it. You know, the difference between a, a pessimist and an optimist is that a pessimist sees a problem in every opportunity and an optimist sees uh, an opportunity in every problem. There is a door of opportunity for us to walk through. There's a door of obligation, though. You see, the kingdom of God is like this king who throws a wedding party, who invites people to the wedding feast, the king arranged for the wedding feast. The, the king arranged for the wedding. and The king arranged for the, the invitations to go out to all the people. The, the king arranged for, to send out the servants. The, made all the arrangements. I didn't make the arrangements. You didn't make the arrangements. The king did. And we know in this parable the king is God. God wants to include everybody in the kingdom, into the feast, into the party. He invited the nation Israel first. And then he invites everyone. He goes and sends the servants out into the streets and invites everybody. You see somebody, invite them to come. God wants people of every nation to hear the gospel message. Nobody is excluded. And so we stand at that door of obligation because we're the servants. We are God's servants. We are the ones that God is sending out with those invitations. The message is going to get out to people through us. Now we can go. We can be part of those mission teams. We can go ourselves and, and, and invite people to come and be a part of that that faith walk that we're on. Or we can send somebody in our place. It's okay. Not all of us can go. But we can send somebody in our place. We, we support Connie Wyke. She's our missionary in China. And every Christmas we, we take an a offering for her, a Christmas Eve offering, and we send that so that she can be able to, to get the message of Jesus Christ to the people in China. But do you know that we don't have to wait until Christmas to be a support of, for her? We can actually go to her website and we can see the things that she's doing and, and the needs that she has. We could be praying for her. We can be supporting her by, by hearing those faith stories that she puts on her website. We have a door of obligation to go through. A challenge to move beyond just being a nice church to being a church that makes a world of difference. I invite you to come and, and be part of the, the mission team that goes to southern Illinois. We're going to be working alongside a, a church, a Hispanic church that's down there. And we're, going to, we're going to approach it in the same manner. What is it that you need us to do? What can we do to help you to get the gospel message out to, to the people in southern Illinois, to the, those that speak Spanish in particular? We're going to go and we're going to be there on a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday. So it's a short term. I invite you to come and be a part of that. There's a, if you want to, there's a, an application, there's a, a, a way to commit to it there on the board between the two bathrooms out here in the, in the gathering space. Sometimes we are the only Bible people see. 
Do we care what happens to people in other nations? We should because, you see, God cares about people all across the world and other nations along with us. Because God cares, we should care. We're the servants, remember? We're the ones that are being sent out to share the message. I think about the, you know, on those amusement rides, like at Six Flags, there's a, there's a place where it's a cartoon character says, you have to be this tall in order to ride the ride. Well, sometimes we approach the kingdom of God like that. I'm sorry, you don't, you don't meet this standard. You can't come unless you... God says, no, everybody is invited. Everybody. Come. Come. And be a part of the kingdom of God. There's one more door that we have. It's the door of celebration. The door of celebration. And believe it or not, there are people that get to that door and don't want to go through. They see the party going on in the other room, but they don't want to make that commitment to go in through that door. Hope, hope that you can see that party and you're ready to go. I hope you stand at that door and you say, I'm ready to get into that party. The goal of the church, the goal of missions, the goal of, of sending teams, the goal of of invitation is for people to make a faith response. To make a commitment. To say, I want to be a part of that kingdom of God party. Not to create nice people for nice churches. But to make passionate people on fire for God. We need passionate people on fire for God. If you look at that Matthew passage again in verses 11 to 13, it talks about this really kind of difficult thing for us. There's a man who didn't have the clothes on, the right clothes on, and you think, oh, do I have to have, do I have to look a certain way? No, that's not what it's about. You see, the clothes were the clothes of righteousness, right relationship with God. The clothes were given to everybody at the door by the king. Everybody had those clothes, and this person chose not to, to put those clothes on, chose not to be in right relationship with God. You understand? God gives us the clothes. We can be in right relationship, those clothes of righteousness. We need to be able to have those on when we're going to God's party, to that feast, to the kingdom. And the way we do that is by making that choice to say, I choose God. I choose to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And that's part of that invitation when we go out. Next, next Sunday at 8 o'clock, we're going to be worshiping in, in the park instead of worshiping here. We're going to be out at, at Northwoods Park. And you say, why, why are we going out there? Just because it's nice? No. It's not just nice. It's a way of inviting people to come and join in the celebration. You know, there's sometimes people are, un, are, are not sure about coming to church buildings, but they're okay with coming to a park. So here we are. We're going to be having worship in the park, 8 o'clock next next Sunday, it's an opportunity for you to invite somebody to come, to hear the message, to make a commitment, to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate it. That's Psalm 67. It's a, it's a psalm of celebration. It's a, it's a psalm of corporate worship. It was a way that, there's some psalms you see that you sing by yourself, but this Psalm 67 was a song that that all the people gathered together and they sang together. It was part of their their harvest festival, kind of like our Thanksgiving. And so they sang this psalm and they would say, Thank you, God, for blessing us with this harvest. Thank you, God, for blessing us. But it wasn't just about them. It didn't stop there. 
It said, thank you for blessing us so that all the people could be blessed, so that other people could be blessed through us, so that we could take that message out. Wow. That psalm is a psalm, a celebration of not just about us being blessed, but about all the people being blessed. And so we are blessed in such a way that we need to help bless others. And we do that through missions. We do that through taking the message to other nations. We do that by inviting people to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. The mission purpose is so that all may know God. The mission of our church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. The world. Our passion for God motivates us to be passionate for God's people. When we stand at the door, are you ready to walk through? Do you, do you want to be known as the nice United Methodist Church of Morton? Or do you want to be Morton United Methodist Church that makes a difference in the world? You're thinking, aren't you? Let's think about walking through those doors, making that choice. The door, the door of opportunity, the door of obligation, the door of celebration. Praise be to God. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you so much that you invite us to participate in getting the message out to people around the world. Lord, we thank you for opportunities to reach out to others. We thank you for the obligation that you've laid upon our heart to go or to send someone. We thank you for the opportunity, the door to celebrate. Help us to make that choice in our own life, to put on the clothes of righteousness, but to invite others to do the same. In Christ's name, amen. amen. I invite you to stand. We're going to sing, We Are the Church. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. Let's stand and sing. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. Yes, we're the church together. Church is not a building. The church is not a steeple. Church is not a resting place. The church is a people. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages, too, from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Church is marching. Sometimes it's bravely burning, sometimes it's riding, sometimes hiding, always it's learning. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. When the people gather, they're singing and they're praying. There's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it saying, I am the church, you are the church, we 
are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. At Pentecost, some people received the Holy Spirit and told the good news through the world to all who would hear it. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together, all around the places, all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. We are the church together, and the message needs to go out to all the people, all the nations. And so we can do that together. Amen. Amen. Let's sing. Weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together, unity and love. Weave, weave, weave us together, weave us together, together in love. 